Caribbean undersea volcano may soon erupt. This is a section of the Caribbean that we're looking at. You can see the Puerto Rico Trench on the purple area. It's a, a plate boundary that tilted the limestone along the north edge of the Caribbean plate and the instability means that from time to time giant slabs break off and slide into the Puerto Rican Trench. This is a NOAA image. And the volcano that is a hazard is an undersea volcano of the Lesser Antilles below the ocean surface and it poses additional also threats having to do with tsunamis as well a submarine volcano called Kikam Jenny, and it lies beneath the waters north of Grenada in the Eastern Caribbean. Two of its eruptions in 1939 and 1965 resulted in flank collapses, generating measurable tsunamis on north coast of Grenada, only eight kilometers away. The study having to do with the recent Imperial College London material having to do with the undersea volcano. Researchers had an opportunity to study the underwater volcano of the Caribbean when it erupted while they were surveying the area. And they published on the journal Geochemistry, Geophysics, Geosystems new research into the very little studied underwater volcanoes we do have a number of volcanoes that are underwater, and I'll do another video on that. It's very interesting to know where they are. The uh, Tamu Massif has recently given us uh, reason to look into undersea volcanoes. On November 11th last year, we had the Massif earthquake that shook the whole earth for 20 minutes. And uh, we didn't know why the earth shook and rang like a bell worldwide. The geologists later told us that it was the massif, that is, around Madagascar. Now, this having to do with Kikim Jenny, they investigated the volcano in the Lesser Antilles, thought to be named after the turbulent waters nearby. The team was from Imperial College London, Southampton and Liverpool Universities with colleagues from University of West Indies, Seismic Research Center, and they collected ocean bottom seismometers aboard the NERC research ships, part of larger experiments that were, uh, they were alerted to the volcano erupting. They had direct observation of submarine eruptions, which were very rare, but having the ship nearby allowed them to get to the volcano in time to record what happened after the eruption. Using ship-based imaging technology, they were able to survey the volcano. They observed gas coming from the central cone, and data was combined with previous surveys going back more than 30 years to show the long-term pattern of eruptive activity. Kikimjeni is one of the Caribbean's most active volcanoes. It sits eight kilometers off the coast of Grenada, another island there, and it was first discovered in 1939 when a 300 meter column of ash and dust was spotted rising up from the ocean. And that's how they figured it was an undersea volcano. Now, the volcanic activity at Kikim Jenny, or KEJ for short, is usually detected by seismic activity picked up on land-based seismometers, and the recordings show that the volcano is active on a decadal time scale. The lead author was PhD student Robert Allen from the Department of Earth Science and Engineering at Imperial College London. And he said there are surveys of Kikim Jenny area going back 30 years, but our survey in April 2017 is unique in that it immediately followed an eruption. So this gave us unprecedented data on what this volcanic activity actually looks like, rather than relying on interpreting seismic signals, end quote. 
They, what they found was that the volcano had frequent cycles of lava dome growth by collapse through landslides. And similar cycles were recently witnessed on the nearby volcano island of Montserrat. A co-author, Jenny, Dr. Jenny Collier from Department of Earth Science and Engineering and Imperial said, Kikim Jenny is a very active volcano, but because it is submarine, is less well studied than other volcanoes in the Caribbean. Our research shows that whilst it has quite regular cycles, it is on a relatively small scale, which will help inform future monitoring strategies. The director, Professor Richard Robertson, said this study has confirmed very useful recent insights on the activity and evolution of Kikim Jenny volcano. For us, the agency with responsibility for monitoring this volcano, the results of this collaborative research project enable us to better quantify our existing model of this volcano and help in developing strategies for managing future eruptions." End quote. Now, any volcano which were, was a land volcano, which was as lively as Kikim Jenny, would be constantly monitored by satellites and local instruments looking for the slightest change in the behavior of the volcano, which could, of course, precede a major volcanic eruption. But because of the fact that this is an underwater volcano, submarine volcano, the job of monitoring is much more difficult. Electromagnetic energy emitted by satellites cannot penetrate the sea surface, and instruments are much more difficult to set up on the volcano, of course, because it's submarine. Scientists, therefore, know comparatively little about the growth and the behavior long-term of this submarine volcano cone, like, yeah, they do, like they do with all submarine volcanoes. They, they have the same problem with the other ones. They can't have their instruments close enough to know when a major volcanic eruption will take place. The most famous submarine volcanoes are those that lead to the uh, formation of new islands, such as the eruption of Surtsey, which was in Iceland in the 1960s. But uh, rather than that growing a cone, the survey shows mass loss of Kikim Jenny due to frequent landslides that take place there because of the Puerto Rican trench. And comparison with recent studies show that similar frequent small volume landslides may be what is taking place in the long-term evolution of active submarine volcanoes. I'll leave a link below for you for this on uh, Geology and, and also the um, uh, very big USGS comet study having to do with Caribbean volcanoes the trench and the tsunami threats because they also have a very good map having to do with not only the Caribbean volcanoes but uh, the volcanoes of the Canary Island, the Canary Island volcanoes, the Azores and the Canary Island volcanoes off of Morocco. And we know that recently we had uh, 4.6 off Morocco uh, that was slanting from uh, southwest to northeast, passing like a line through France, where we had the crack in France recently. And uh, it could be because of the fact that uh, it's on a fault and uh, volcanic area. Okay, the area in France that had the Earthquakes was basically around the Alps, and uh, Morocco was just on the coast off the um, Canary Islands, which are all, of course, volcanic. So they have a map here showing what a tsunami from there would look like. It would pass, of course, onto across the Atlantic, like a big lake, the Atlantic Ocean, and it would affect the um, Caribbean islands. Of course, even the East Coast of the United States, but even the Caribbean islands, the Caribbean in general. So I'll leave a link below. You can look through those as well. 
Now, according to Volcano Discovery, Kikum Jenny Volcano, and I'll leave a link below for you for this, it's a submarine volcano. It's uh, depressed 607 feet below sea level. West Indies, Grenada. The current status is restless. It's two out of five. Kick and Jenny web webcams, live camera, you can see here, and uh, volcano books. Kick and Jenny is a historically active submarine volcano, eight kilometers off the north shore of Grenada, rising 1,300 meters from the seafloor. Recent background says recent bathymetric surveys have shown evidence for a major accurate collapse structure that was the source of a submarine debris avalanche that traveled more than 15 kilometers to the west. Bathymetry also reveals another submarine cone to the southeast, Kick and Jenny, and submarine lava domes to its south. These and subaerial tough rings and lava flows at Ile de Caille and other nearby islands may represent a single large volcanic complex. Numerous historical eruptions, mostly documented by acoustic signals, have occurred at Kikim Jenny since 1939, when an eruption cloud rose 275 meters, that's about 900 feet above the sea surface. Prior to the 1939 eruption, which was witnessed by a large number of people in northern Grenada, there had been no written mention of Kikim Jenny. Eruptions have involved both ex explosive activity and quiet extrusion of lava flow and lava domes in the summit crater. Deep rumbling noises have sometimes been heard on shore. And historical eruptions have modified the morphology of the summit crater. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece. In Capota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.